So now you know that graphs can be used to illustrate an individual's choices. What about the choices facing a society? Well, who makes decisions on behalf of society? The government. What kinds of things does our government provide for us? Well, they provide things like roads, education, national defense, our justice system, research, unemployment benefits. The government's trying to do an awful lot of things for us all the time. In a sense, the government is just like us. They're trying to fulfill this many needs with this many resources. So, how do I tell this story using a graph? First, I want to narrow down the categories of things that the government tries to provide to two. Why only two? Oh yeah, I can only draw two. Okay, let's say that our society has two categories of goods and services. Military, things like national defense, anti-terrorism programs, etc. And civilian, which might include roads, parks, or low-income support. You, as the economic analyst, have no say in what the society should do with its resources, but you can examine what we could do. If society takes every bit of its resources, all the land, all the labor, all the capital, and all the entrepreneurial ability, and puts it into the production of military goods and services, let's say that we can produce 5,000 units of military output. But this leaves no resources to produce civilian goods, so we would have zero units of civilian output. Note that I'm not making any judgment as to whether this is a good idea or a bad idea, just that it's a possible choice that can be made. What if you want to consider having some roads or schools or parks? Let's say that you're considering building a thousand units of civilian goods, maybe a thousand schools or a thousand miles of road. Where will the resources to produce a thousand units of civilian goods come from? That's right, you'd have to take the resources away from military production so military must decrease, let's say, to 4,800 units. What's that? You think I've made some kind of a mistake? How could I possibly gain 1,000 units of civilian goods and only sacrifice or have an opportunity cost of 200 units of military goods? Well, consider this. What if civilian represents elementary schools and military is stealth bombers? Which one do you think takes up more resources? There's no reason why there would have to be a one-for-one -one trade off. In fact, it would be unrealistic and restrictive to assume this. Okay, so what if I want more civilian goods, 2,000 schools or 2,000 miles of road? Then what? Yep, we would have to shift more resources away from military production so that now civilian is 2,000 but military is only 4,500. This time you're sure I've made a mistake? How could I have sacrificed only 200 military initially, but now I'm giving up 300 military? No mistake. Instead of constant opportunity cost, as we had with the grades example, we now have increasing opportunity cost, where our sacrifice will just keep getting bigger and bigger. A PPC that shows increasing opportunity cost is actually much more representative of how the world works it happens when resources are not as perfectly well suited for one type of production as the other. I'll come back to this in another video segment. Following this pattern of increasing opportunity cost, let's complete the table. To get 3,000 civilian goods, you drop to 4,000 military. To get 4,000 civilian, you drop to 3,300 3, military. To get 5,000 civilian, you drop to 2,000 military. And if you use every bit of society's resources for civilian output, you'll have 6,000 units of civilian goods, but not have any resources left for military production. Again, as the economic analyst, it isn't your job to decide which of these combinations is good or bad. So, who does get to decide? That's right, the government. Let's say that you're not only an economic analyst, but you're also presenting your data to the White House. Visuals are good, so take a few minutes now to pause this video and map out the combinations with military on the vertical axis and civilian on the horizontal. Hopefully, yours looks something like this. 
again, it illustrates the inverse relationship between military and civilian production, the bowed out shape shows the increasing opportunity cost. You bring your charts and figures and explain to the president, Mr. or Mrs. President, this is the production possibilities curve, sometimes referred to as the production possibilities frontier, since it shows the outer limit of what can be produced with our current resources. What point will the president pick? Right again, it depends. Depends on what? Well, it could be any number of factors. Political ideology could determine where the president would pick. Your typical or average Republican, if there is such a thing, tends to lean more toward the military. This is classic Reagan behavior. Democrats are often viewed as spenders, more on social programs closer to the civilian axis. Could be world events. In the early 1990s, after the fall of the Berlin Wall and the Soviet Union, we moved away from the military axis. But after 9-11, we moved toward the military axis. So, the president thinks it over carefully and finally says, I choose point H. What do you tell the president? Hopefully, you're making your response respectful, because after all, this is the president. So how about something like, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. or Mrs. President, but perhaps I've miscommunicated something to you. This line, the production possibilities curve, represents the outer boundary of what we can produce right now, even if we use all of the available resources. To which the president responds, ah yes, you did make a mistake, but I see now. I choose point I. What do you tell the president? Well, Mr. or Mrs. President, you certainly could choose point I, but then we would have resources going to waste. In particular, you might point out that unused resources are unemployed resources. More specifically, unemployed labor makes for unhappy voters. That usually works with politicians. The point is that while you, the economic analyst, do the positive analysis, ultimately the government decides where we should produce, the normative analysis. You demonstrate the possible outcomes and it's up to the policymakers to make the final choice.